welcome back. Now, my next guest is a world-renowned body language expert. He has made a career out of teaching people about the importance of non-verbal communication and how it can impact your work and your everyday life. He's worked with some of the biggest world leaders and has been described as their secret weapon. He joins us to tell us more. Mark Bowden, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ruth. Great to be here. Mark, I think we're probably all familiar with some aspects of body language, but the fact that you are writing books about it and training people means there's so much more to it. For somebody like me who doesn't have much of a clue, uh, can you give me a little bit of an insight into aspects of body language? Well, look, here's what you need to understand is that people judge you immediately. The moment people see me, they judge me immediately. And we do this in a part of our brain that's very, very old. It's part of our evolutionary history. And so we get judged based on the behaviours that we show, what happens in our face, in our hands, in our body, the context that we're in, the tone of voice. And so if we can change change some of that or much of that, we can get a prediction, a judgment from other people more like how we'd like to be seen. We can show ourselves at our best. And so that's what I help people with. Mark, I'm fascinated because you use your hands so much there when you're talking. Is this a skill that you've learned in terms of uh, controlling your own, controlling what your body says as such? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's all on purpose. It, it has some unconscious nature to it. But at the moment, I'm making sure my hands are in the frame so you can see some of my gestures. Without that, you get insufficient data around what's happening in part of my body. And when insufficient data, you default to more negative. So if I say something like, I want you to trust me, or if I say something like, I want you to trust me, yeah. when you see more open palms, your instinct is getting more data and you're more likely to trust me more. So it plays better to an audience if they can see just a little bit more of you. You don't need to gesture like me. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm doing a little bit on purpose, so we've got something to talk about yeah. for sure. But the more we can see of other people, the more positive we tend to be about them. And this is something that I imagine in the last couple of months has proven to be incredibly, incredibly useful where people who are not accustomed to being you know, the focus of something, now find themselves on all these Zoom calls. I imagine somebody like you is inundated with uh, work at this stage. People saying, can you please help me? Maybe they're lacking in confidence. Maybe they feel they know their stuff, but they can't get it across. Now I'm starting to use my hands a lot as well. Uh, you know, is, is that something, can you train somebody to use their body language in a particular way? Absolutely you can. Of, of course, you know, they need a little bit of help and they need a little bit of practice and they need some technique and some ideas. But ultimately, when you let people know the concepts around it and some of the things to do, it's very, very easy for them. Look, we, we've all now become video presenters mm. in some way. And, and some of us out there, like yourself, have been doing it for a long, long time and you've made a career out of it. So you know some of the techniques, you know some of the things to do on camera that, that, that make people judge you in a more positive light. For other people, they don't know anything about it, yet they have been watching this medium for a great time. Yeah. So look, a little bit of help goes a long, long way when you're trying to do something new, but there are some very old and tried and tested techniques around how to show up on camera. Well, look, uh, I'll chat to you about those, but I'm fascinated. I know that years ago you initially were fascinated by looking at animal behaviour and this developed into you've been fascinated looking at, at the humans and human behaviour. Is there a way for people to easily study this? Like, were you able to go to college and learn these kinds of things? Yeah, when I first started out, really, there wasn't any um, body language courses out there. There was no university to go to around body language. Most nonverbal communication type study was done somewhere in a psychology department and only for short amounts of time. So I was fascinated with human behavior and animal behavior, and I ended up doing fine arts, essentially. I was looking at how do pictures, especially moving pictures in TV and film and theater and animation, how do they influence and persuade us? So I got really obsessed with that, read more books than anybody else I knew, watched as much TV and video around that. The internet wasn't around at the yeah. time. But now, actually, there's a lot of fairly good content that you can easily get your hands on. Uh, look for me on YouTube. Yeah. You'll find me there helping you out. So I find myself thinking that there's a realm even from the likes of actors all the way up to world leaders who would be able to use these skills. Firstly, 
does do, do are actors essentially great deceivers? Are they just using their body language to get the message across? Have they just really got it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the good ones are really good deceivers. The not so good actors are really bad deceivers. And we yeah. go, oh, that doesn't feel quite right. Or there's something not good about that. Or I'm not really engaged with that. The really good actors, you totally believe, you totally feel that they're going through the situation or the emotion or the thought process that they want you to. Now, sometimes they may be, sometimes they aren't, but the illusion is really, really good. But having said that, Ruth, we're all really good deceivers. I mean, <laughs> who of us can't say that we haven't got away with a lie at the right time when it was important, and often for very, very good reasons. Lying is and deceiving is one mm. of our most important social skills, as is telling the truth, in fact. Is there a way we can tell that somebody is lying? Because I think we've possibly heard the stories of if somebody looks up to the left, they're t telling the truth or vice versa. Uh, are there ways that we could look at somebody and know, yeah, you're definitely lying? There is no Pinocchio's nose. There is no one indicator that would show that. The eye accessing cues that you're talking about is different for different people. You have to baseline that. Look, a really good deceiver and a really good liar is going to be able to lie to you and deceive you, ones that are not so good, not, not so well. Okay. Part of your job being social is to accept some lies as well. So you need to look for clusters of behavior. You're trying to look for discomfort against what somebody is saying. And with that, you can get closer to the idea as if they're lying or not. But really good ones, you're going to find it hard. Oh, man. OK, so what about, can we, can we flip that around and can we be the deceivers? For instance, going for a job interview or in a situation where you might really be feeling the stress and the pressure. Can we use body language yes. in a way to convince somebody that we are actually totally calm and we have this and we're not a bag of nerves, even though we might feel it? Yeah, we can. And let me help you with that and everybody there. Look, if you're going for an interview and you're on camera, for example, or if we do get back to doing those live interviews, what I want you to do is make sure that people can see open palm gestures at exactly navel height when you're talking. That's going to make you come across as calm and assertive, and it'll actually calm you down, as opposed to being very tight with your body and your hands up high like this. That will cause you to look maybe a bit too overexcited and nervous, so bring your hands down to open palm gestures at exactly navel height. That's going to help you be calm, assertive, warm and open. I suspect that this is something that world leaders can, can use, can really use to their benefit. I know you've worked with some of the G7 leaders, you're probably not able to say who, but what are the main skills that they might be looking to acquire? And are they, I'm wondering, are they very different to what a normal day-to-day person's requirements might be? It's pretty much the same. You know, they're under stress, just like we're under stress in certain situations. And in certain situations, they feel very comfortable, just like us. So under stress and pressure, one of the things I'm training them to do is be bigger and more expansive with their body language, take up more space, okay. do more open palm gestures for trust and credibility, get their breathing rate down, which will bring their heart rate down. Essentially, I'm helping them be calm and assertive, even when they're under the most stress and pressure. And that tends to be done with open body language, yeah. maximising their body language, taking up more space and lowering their breathing rate and heart rate. Mark, I would say it is great crack to sit watching the news with you because I can imagine you looking at world leaders going, she's a bag of nerves, he's an absolute liar. I think it'll be fascinating. Tell me then about the book that's our truth plane. Um, you have a book and you've truth plane and you've YouTube, you've it all going on. And I'm all about the hand gestures here in studio. But tell me a little bit about truth plane. <laughs> yeah, so truth plane is the company that I have that helps people all over the world to stand out, win trust and gain credibility every time they communicate. You'll find that at truthplane.com. And you'll find lots of video there that you can watch as well and get some free training around that. I've got Four books on human behavior and body language. The most recent one, Truth and Lies, what people are really thinking. That will help you read body language as well. And if you get yourself onto YouTube and put in Mark Bowden, you'll find me there as well. Brilliant. Mark, it was an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. I guess you'll be busy doing all this body language uh, work over the next while. But anything major in the offing that you'd be able to share with us today? 
Yeah, absolutely. I've been working with three colleagues who are all great interrogators. And we look at videos of politicians, for example, and we tell you what's most likely going on for them in their mind. So you can check out the behavior panel. Dot com uh, or the behavior panel on YouTube. You'll find us yeah, there if you want to see great. four of the top body language experts looking at body language. That is fascinating. I could talk to you for the entire day, but alas, I must move on. Thank you so much, Mark. Really enjoyed getting to talk to you today. Thanks, Ruth.